Ah, well, here we are again then. <laughs> so I have now uh, addressed the issue with the um, uh, the Y axis corner pieces, turned them around. Yeah, reset everything up, reflattened it. Blah, blah. So now I think I can confidently say that the Y axis is done. At least we're on track with the uh, with the old Prusa manual on the internet. And uh, I've even mounted this uh, limit switch here, which actually does now. And if you listen very carefully, maybe you can't hear that. I don't know. But it, it does actually, um, yeah, it works. Um, the mounting is a little bit iffy, but it is on your limit switch. So I guess that's all good. So what that means is that we can uh, put this to one side for a minute and uh, we can start building the z-axis. Now the z-axis, the x-axis, not the z-axis, that's next. The x-axis, uh, which is going to be fairly straightforward, hopefully, by the look of it, mm, maybe. Um, now I'll be building this, I'm making absolutely no changes to this to um, Tom's build and basically Tom's build makes no changes to the uh, genuine Prusa manual except for um, this part here um, in Tom's version has been modified. This area here has been added on. Basically this is for the changed uh, limit switches. Normally on the standard one if you can see it would be, uh, light's a bit rubbish, but it would be into this section here um, because of his larger ones he's extended this flange here it mounts on there and it hits uh, something on the um, something on the extruder mount I believe eventually but other than that it is um, exactly like the original Prusa so I'll do a little time lapse and uh, yeah get back to you when it's done So hit a little bit of a problem there, which I think is uh, worth pausing for. So the time lapse is on hold whilst we have a look at um, this little problem. So yeah, this is uh, part of the x-axis and this is what the whole extruder and hot end and everything bolts to. And uh, according to the instructions, you're supposed to <laughs> push these uh, tie wraps down through these little holes. It's supposed to loop round a channel inside this here small hollow channel and come back out that hole there and uh yeah i'm sure it works sometimes but um in my case i was poking and poking and i thought well yeah it's probably got a little bit of uh material in there a bit of abs or something in there so i've got all sorts of pokey tools in there and i just wasn't getting anywhere so you'll notice that this has three new holes uh, sorry four new holes in fact and another two holes down here as well um so yeah, i basically drilled through did a little bit of exploration first of all and then decided the best thing to do was to drill all the way through and then get the old dremel on the scene and basically cut uh slots in the back or front whichever way you look at it here um so that i could then dig out all the rubbish and basically once i'd done that i found out that there was no way i was going to be poking that out through that tiny little hole it was completely full of material uh, albeit infill but uh yeah it was just never going to come out um so yeah i sort of dug that out with the help of uh pokey things a scalpel and then i sort of drilled some little holes uh, as you can see sort of up through there and um, anyway long story short I can now poke one of these all the way through the back here like so and then up through the other roll like so oh, come on get up there and then pull it tight and um, yeah it sort of sits back down in the channel um, I can't really see that this is going to be any kind of problem because this is all still flat I've deburred all of this 
it's completely flat the majority of it's covered up anyway so you're not even going to see it and uh yeah so i'm not really sure why they decided to do it that way in any case um I mean, it's all cool and everything having these little hidden channels in there, but there was always going to be a bit of a, a bit of a risk that it was going to get blocked up and you couldn't get these things through. And um, I can't see that it would weaken it in any way, um, especially if it was actually done in the print. You'd only need, you know, a nice little bit out of the back here that you could just poke it through, and life would be a lot easier. But anyway, they didn't. Um, so yeah, now that's done. We get on back with building it, I suppose. Right, so that's the x-axis. Um, for, for quite a simple part, it was actually a bit of a pain in the butt. So obviously the biggest pain was this tie wrap effort here. Um, but also, what was the other issue? Right, yeah, I would recommend, although Tom doesn't have it in his uh, parts list or bill of materials or BOM, um, definitely get yourself some 18mm M3 hex caps. Um, there's quite a few things that need 18 and anything more like 20 is no good. <laughs> Maybe 15 might be right, I don't know. I've only got 10 and 20 mil, and I'm having to cut down quite a few uh, for the stepper motors specifically on here. Um, the other thing, and let's have a look at this, is again this limit switch thing here um yeah well basically as you can see probably if i hold it in the right sort of way let's do it this way <laughs> so this um these two m3 hex caps that hold this switch on uh, basically have to go through a fairly thin bit of um uh, ABS here and basically 10 mil which is the smallest I've got is actually um, uh, too big so I had to cut them down and they're probably about I don't know four mil long I suppose and the other thing is that I would definitely recommend that before you do that you drill and tap with an M3.5 I think it is pitch um, tap down through those holes because um, just shoving it in like I did uh, it split the ABS around here um, it just delaminated slightly um, on the front here so I've had to acetone glue that all back together it's it wasn't terrible it's just literally it started to delaminate so stop what I was doing acetoned it back together and then I uh, tapped it out so I'd recommend tapping it out to begin with um, and yeah, that was about it. Getting the bearings in was actually fine. They line up fine. Um, yeah, no other major traumas with this really. But like I said, for a simple part, it was uh, it took some time, and uh, most of it really was not. It was just sort of looking at things and trying to figure out. Yeah. I'm still not 100% sure if this limit switch is going to work because, as far as I can see, um, it's going to hit more or less exactly where the hot end fan is but not on the casing of the hot end fan but it sort of manages to go right into the entry port of the, the fan so um, yeah I'll have to have a look at that when we get around to putting it all together it might be lucky it sort of depends on which way the fan goes uh, which kind of depends which way you want the wiring going anyway so that's that and uh, so that's another axis done and uh, next up it will be the z-axis <laughs> 